Good morning, class. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and welcome to Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit gets fed, our faith grows, and we learn how to please God and be an overcomer like He intended for us to be. We've saved you a place right up here in the front and would like for you to go ahead and get, your, get the textbook, get your Bible, and get something to take notes on and just come right on in. Uh, sometimes people say, well, we're, we're coming into your living room. No, no, you're coming in to join us into the classroom in this environment of Holy Spirit anointing and teaching, quickening our minds, illuminating our eyes of our understanding and our spirit. And we're going to pray right now and believe for exactly what you need to hear, what we need to hear today. Only the Lord can minister simultaneously to uh, thousands of people at once or millions of people at once. It's amazing what He can do, but He can do it. Let's ask for it. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the opportunity to have a faith school. Thank you for the opportunity to send this word around the world. And everyone that you have joined to this class, we're praying your quickening, teaching anointing, and healing and restoring anointing on them and on us exactly what we need to see and hear and know, what we need to receive, a supply of the Spirit, we ask for it in Jesus' name. And we say we won't be forgetful hearers, but we'll hold on to it and we'll put it into practice. And as surely as we do, you'll watch over it and perform it. We thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, get out your uh, textbook class and let's go to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, we were actually talking about some of these things uh, on last week's uh, uh, faith school. But if you're joining us now for the first time, let me encourage you, uh, go online and go back to the previous uh, classes. Uh, you'll see them week one, week two, week three. And uh, uh, we're, what we're doing is progressive. We're building now on the foundation that was laid from week one all the way up till now. And it's okay if um, you want to, you know, pause this and, and go back and get that and work your way up to this. Uh, but for you regulars, here we go. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 13. He said, uh, we... Uh, having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Down in verse 18, he also said, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal. Down a little bit later in chapter 5, in verse 7, he said, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Here he, he mentions faith as the spirit of faith. And that's significant to notice, because as particularly this week, I believe we'll get into the spirit of faith. Uh, it didn't just say, uh, the understanding of faith or knowledge of faith. Faith isn't knowledge. Just knowing about something doesn't mean you have faith in that area. The spirit of faith. Uh, the spirit of faith, actually if you look in Timothy, he, he talks about the spirit of fear. So what a difference between a spirit of fear and a spirit of faith. Well, fear is not rational. Uh, when someone is um, having a panic attack, for instance, uh, sometimes people around them may, may try to express to them, look, there's nothing to be that upset about, but fear is not based on reason. Uh, you, fear includes feelings. 
emotions, and what many people don't understand, spirit. Spirit influences. And so you can sense fear, feel fear, when there might not be any rational reason to be afraid. Uh, Even as a young boy, I know uh, uh, I didn't know a lot of word, but uh, thank God I had been to some Sunday school classes and they had taught us the 23rd Psalm. And I remember there was one particular thing that was really bothering me and scaring me as a boy. And I didn't realize it, but the Spirit of God quickened and brought back that phrase to me from the 23rd Psalm. And I just said it out loud. Didn't know what I was doing, but the Spirit of God will lead you the right way even when you don't know in your head. I said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Well, uh, I was feeling fear. I was sensing fear. Fear is more than reason and knowledge. Well, faith is more than reason and knowledge. Uh, This is faith school, faith school broadcasts. But uh, just, you know, making notes and, and finding the scriptures and logging the information, that doesn't mean you're full of faith. Knowing about faith is not the same thing as being full of faith. Knowing about fear is not the same thing as being full of fear. So he says that we have the same spirit of faith. Everybody say spirit of faith. faith. Let's read it again. We having the same spirit of faith. Now, um, Uh, Corinthians talks about um, uh, watching out for uh, corrupt communications because um, it can, uh, well, it's kind of like what your uh, mother might have told you, don't hang out with the wrong crowd. They can influence you. Well, it's true, good or bad. Um, You want to hang out with faith people. And especially people that have more faith than you. That's a really good thing because it can get off on you. The spirit of faith. And the spirit of faith is seen in, you can hear it in the tone uh, of a person's voice. You can see it in the way they carry themselves. You, you You can see it in their words and their actions. Well, you can see the spirit of defeat, can't you? I mean, people slump down and they're whining and maybe they're, they're mumbling and, and they're, they're complaining and, or the spirit of fear. You know, I'm just so afraid this is going to happen. I'm just so afraid this is not going to happen. Well, if, you, if the spirit of fear and, and depression and all like that, if that's obvious, the spirit of faith is obvious too. And the spirit of faith is the spirit of victory. Hallelujah. The scripture said in 1 John, it said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so you you can detect the spirit of faith by the spirit of victory. Said out loud, the spirit of faith faith is is the spirit of victory. Now, you'll notice in other scriptures, it says he has made us overcomers. He has made us more than conquerors. He always causes us to triumph. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you hear these words? Overcomer, more than a conqueror, victory, triumph. These all describe a faith-filled individual. If you're full of faith, you're full of victory. (laughs) If you're full of faith, that's what you see, even though you might be in the middle of of so much duress and problems. You you see beyond it. And by faith, you see victory. You see you coming out. You see you overcoming, even though you might be in the worst trials of a situation. You don't just focus here. Remember our scripture? We look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. 
uh, if, you, if you walk by sight, you will have the spirit of fear. You know, just looking at the world and looking at what's going on, all the problems, if you feed on that and you just look at that, fear will be fed. It'll be fed into you. And the spirit of fear will grip your life. That's how people get to the place where uh, they don't think they can even leave their apartment or leave the house. People get to the place where they feel like they can't, they're afraid to eat anything. They're afraid to, to, to drink only this kind of water or only this kind of thing. Uh, listen, friend, there's enough stuff in the air we breathe to kill us 10,000 times. There's enough stuff in, in any kind of food, no matter how great you think it is, everything down here has been affected by the curse. Because of man's sin, death entered in. And so there's nothing down here that's truly pure or truly clean. There, there's nothing down here that's perfect. Everything's been flawed. Everything's been contaminated. Everything's been affected by sin, by death, by the curse. But we got the greater one inside of us. And he can even help us overcome things that would otherwise be fatal. Do you remember the scriptures in, in Mark? How that the Lord talked about uh, uh, those that believe on him and believe in his name and the things that they would do. And among other things, he said, if they eat any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. We see Paul in the book of Acts on the island when a snake bit him. Well, and everybody around that lived on the island, they knew what snake that was. They knew if that snake bites you, you're a goner. But uh, Paul just shook that thing off in the fire, and then the people were astounded when no harm befell him. Nothing happened to him. He didn't swell up. He didn't choke. He didn't fall over and die. What does that mean? Even though there are poisons, contaminants, all kind of things around us in this world, greater is he that is inside of us than he that is in the world. And the greater one inside us can quicken our immune system, can quicken our bodies, our glands, our organs, and can even, the power of God, can even render poisons, venom, poisonous things in food or drink, can render them inert, can render them harmless. Isn't that wonderful, saints? If we'll believe it, but now fear, fear will kick the poisons into overdrive. <laughs> fear, the, I read some years ago a study uh, that some people were doing on what they called uh, emotions and the uh, immune system. And uh, uh, they, they did some tests and studies and, and they had somebody that had all the symptoms of the worst kind of flu that would go into a, a, a place where other group of people were, and then they would, uh, they would find out about it. And the people that would get into fear and go, oh no, why didn't you tell me you have the flu? And I can't be in here with you. And, and, and they try to, you know, they, they had them monitored and they said their pores literally would open up. <laughs> the more fear that they were in, uh, literally drawing whatever contaminant might be around them or virus into them. The pores open up, the immune system weakens, spiritual things affect natural things. Can you see that, class? Well, if fear would do that to you, making you more susceptible to it, even, well, there's a spiritual principle, you know, in the book of Job, he talked about the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. So there is a spiritual law that fear draws to you the thing you're afraid of. And, uh, but there were other people, they'd come in there and they'd coughing and sneezing and, and then they say, oh man, they got this terrible flu. And a few of them said, ah, it won't bother me. I never get the flu. It won't bother me. And they had monitors on them. Their pores did not change. Their blood pressure, their heart rate did not change. Their immune system seemed unaffected. Can spiritual things affect natural things? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. The Bible said there's life and death in the power of the tongue. It's not just that somebody said that, but if you really believe, it won't bother me. Or if you believe, oh no, I can't be around this, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. it the, the spiritual laws affect physical things. And so you see the spirit of fear over here, you see the spirit of faith over here. And if you hang around fear, that fear can contaminate you. If you're around people that have a lot of fear, one, you're going to go one way or the other. Either you're going to influence them out of their fear, or uh, you're going to join them in their fear. And unless you feed on something that, that boosts your faith, you're going to have fear. Because everything in this world is trying to put fear in you. Bad reports and, uh, you know, statistics. And most of, the, most of the statistics you hear, people emphasize the negative. People say, well, you know, four out of five, four out of five are going to get that sometime. Well, a faith person would go, well, one person lives their whole life and never gets it. Somebody's got to be that person, right? So I volunteer. <laughs> I'll be the one. Hmm? One out of five. Uh, and, and this, you might think this, this sounds strange, but it is Bible. Go with me to Psalm 91 and you see the spirit of faith. Psalm 91, which is a very uh, familiar psalm to many people. Many call it the, uh, the protection psalm. And it is a faith-building word. He said, Psalm 91.1, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now notice the very next verse, I will say something. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Notice as we read through this, He's not talking fear. He's not saying, oh no, this happens to three out of ten or or five out of ten, oh no, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. He said, I will say, the Lord, He's my refuge. Verse 3, surely He'll deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He'll cover you with His feathers and under His wings you'll trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that, wa that wastes at noonday. Can you see, speaking confidently that God's my protector and keeper, and no fear, no fear. Everybody said out loud, the Lord's my refuge. Lord's my refuge. I, will not fear. I will not fear. Now I want you to notice this next verse, how bold he is to speak. He says, uh, verse 7, a thousand shall fall at, at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Now, this is not how most Christians talk. Many Christians, many church-going people, what they say is, well, you just never know. You just, you just never know. What's going to happen to you? None of us want bad things to happen, but you just never know. You just never know is not a scripture. <laughs> and you need to get it out of your mouth because you can know some things. Certainly we don't know everything, but you can know some things. And if you were with us on last week, we begin to get into that in order to have faith, you've got to be sure. In order to have faith, you have to have heard enough of God's Word on that subject until you've gotten settled and you're confident. Notice uh, what he didn't say. He didn't say, well, it's happening to a thousand people over here, and I, I'm not any better than they are, and we sure hope it doesn't happen, but 
You just never know. No, no. he didn't say, well, and, and in 10,000 over here it happened to, and that's a whole lot of people, and, and it, it, I sure hope it doesn't happen to me, but uh, uh, oh, you just never know. And, and, and it just, if it's the Lord's will, if it's the Lord's will. Well, uh, he didn't say that. Not one time did he say in here, if it's the Lord's will, we'll do this. If it's the Lord's will, I'll make it out of here. Why didn't he say it? Because he's already convinced that it is God's will to protect him and keep him. And to the point that he spoke boldly saying, a thousand may fall over here, 10,000 may fall over here, but it won't happen to me. Not too many Christians talk like that. Which is why not too many Christians experience much different as far as protection and keeping than unbelievers. There should be a difference between believers and unbelievers. Do you remember reading in the Old Testament when God delivered the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage? He made a difference between his people and the people that didn't believe in him. I mean, when the plagues swept through Egypt, it got to the, uh, uh, the boundary of the land of Goshen, which there was no wall. There was nothing physical there. It'd be like a state line that you came up to. But the, the plague stopped, and nobody, none of God's people were affected by it. Is it true that even though something terrible might be happening all around, God can keep you in the middle of it? He can protect you in the middle of it. It is true if you'll have faith, and if we got the same spirit of faith that they had, we not only believe, but we are bold to say it. Listen, listen to what the spirit of faith sounds like. This is what the spirit of faith looks like, sounds like. He said, a thousand will fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Well, what if it's God's will uh, for it to come near you? What if it's God's will for you to be destroyed? Apparently they didn't take that into consideration. <laughs> See, th this thing about adding, if it be God's will, to every phrase, every prayer, is a religious mistake. It is something men have come up with to avoid having to walk by faith. There's a lot of things we don't know, that's for sure. But when the Bible clearly reveals His will to us, we're no longer to question His will. Just like we don't question if it's God's will for somebody to be born again, we shouldn't question if it's God's will to protect us, to keep us, it is His will to protect us. But He needs something from us. He needs us to believe that. He requires us to trust Him. And faith is not just believing. Faith is, if we got the same spirit of faith, I believe, therefore I have spoken. We also believe and we therefore speak. Let, let, let's do our faith duty class. Say it out loud, I believe. I believe. My, God my, my God is my fortress, my refuge, my, refuge. my, protector. my protector. I will not fear, will not fear. What, might what might happen, what man might do. Man though, might do. though a thousand, though a thousand fall, at fall at one side of me, though 10,000 fall, Ten fall, on the other side, the other side. it won't happen to me. Because God keeps me. He protects me. Hallelujah. You know, I, I've seen situations like we mentioned earlier where people had, be, had become virtually imprisoned concerning their diet. Couldn't eat anything without having all kinds of problems. 
And uh, one of the issues there is their words. If you say, ooh, ooh, I can't eat that. Ooh, I can't eat that. Boy, it, it'll cause me problems. It'll keep me up all night. It gives me terrible gas. It, it does this. It does a heartburn. Oh, uh, oh, it'll just mess up my stomach for days. If you've been saying that for years, then it has locked you into that. But you ought to be able to eat anything that anybody else can eat. And God can change your digestion, digestive system. He can change your glands. He can change your blood. He can change whatever needs to be changed. But you've got to give Him something to work with. Now, don't override uh, your heart. It, 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 don't eat something in fear <laughs> because it'll cause you a problem. But even though you might feel limited, begin to say, by faith, I have a perfect uh, digestive system. I can eat anything that I want to eat. Uh, this, this doesn't bother me. Say things that, to change the way it's been, not just yielding to it and say, oh, I can't eat that. Oh, I can't drink that. Oh, I can't go here. Oh, I can't go there. I can't be around this. I can't be around that. That puts you in bondage. And that fear draws the problem to you. So begin to say this, I call my immune system strong. I call my digestive system strong. I can eat anything that I need to eat. If I eat any deadly thing, it won't hurt me. It won't bother me. My God is my healer and my keeper. I trust in Him and am kept. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, that's it for class today. I believe the Lord has helped us. Again, you can go back to previous lessons and get caught up and join us again tomorrow. Till then, say it out loud. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith. Giving glory to God.